Hey, what's going on? Back at it again today, building stuff out of scraps, making room in the workshop, getting stuff out of the way. Today, I am going to make a remote caddy. I wanted to hold my phone and some remotes. So today for materials, I've got this African mahogany. It's got an orange color overall, and I've got some scrap black walnut, as always, that I'm going to use for the bottom and sides and front, actually. I got this other chunky piece of walnut with me as a backup just in case. So I'm just getting a new surface on everything right now. Um, this piece of mahogany has already been milled, but I'm just kind of refreshing the flat surfaces on it so that it'll cut nicely at the miter saw. All right, over at the workbench, we're gonna make a very simple measurement here using my biggest remote. So the biggest remote I have is actually for my heat pump. Uh, the other remotes that I want to accommodate are smaller than this. So the max length that I'm going to measure is going to be based off that. This mahogany, I actually just put new edges on it at the table saw. So you're not going to see me do that, but you're going to see me put new edges on this little piece of walnut so that when I bring it over to the miter saw, it cuts nice and clean. So I'll go ahead and set the saw blade to about an eighth of an inch above the workpiece and rip some fresh edges. So now I'm going to line my mark up with the saw blade. Go ahead and cut that. So the build gets pretty quick from here. We're going to take that first piece, go ahead and mark the second piece with it, or just butt it up and make the cut like I'm doing. Now I'm actually going to use that length to cut the what will be the back since they should be the same height. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and flip the saw to 45 degrees, turn it to 45 degrees, I should say. I got a hard stop there on my saw, so that's very quick. I'm gonna line these up uh, and go ahead and put a 45 angle on the end all the way down and I'm gonna use this push stick to make the cut more safely. So there we go, got a nice 45 down the whole way. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the saw back to 90 and I'm gonna chop the tops off of this because I think it looks a lot better. What this is also going to ensure is that my remote is very grabbable from the top. It's going to stick out just that little bit. So there we go, two sides. So again, I'm getting crafty, um, except I wasn't that crafty in the first place. I cut this to the wrong length because I forgot I was going to chop the top off. So I'm just accommodating that now. Then I turn the piece sideways and I take one of the offcuts from earlier and that's going to end up being the front to back length that will be good for my bottom piece. Okay, so we got both of our sides cut now. We've got the back cut. We've got the bottom cut. Whoops. And then one of my off cuts for this, this is what I was hoping for, is nearly perfect for the front. See, it's just a hair too long. So we'll trim that up. And then the back um, so I cut the bottom to be the length for this, so I kind of messed myself up. So 
So the front I got to cut a little shorter and then because of the way I cut the bottom I cut it the full length front to back of these sides. I forgot to account for its thickness when I cut the back piece so I got to go back and trim that too. I might just do that after I glue it in place though because I should be able to do that on the miter saw really really easily now. I ended up putting one more clamp right here because I had it on hand. I said, why not? These were all squared up nice. I had squeezed out the whole way, but I mean, I had it sitting right there on the wall, so I threw it on. Boom. There you go. That came out pretty nice, I think. Uh, don't worry about the glue. This is Type Bond 3. It tends to show a lot, especially on darker woods. That'll all sand right off. Um, this looks nice. I like it a lot. Got a good weight to it. This thing's starting to look pretty good. I'm gonna do two more finishing touches before the actual finish. I'm gonna hit it with 400 real quick, just a quick wipe down. It's gonna make it nice and soft. 
And then I'm going to put a nice light chamfer on the outside here with a 200, 200 grit on this sanding block here. And I'm going to count my passes, you'll see. And we'll end up with a nice little chamfer. Want to just hold it at 45 degrees to this you know just imagine the chamfer and run it down straight all right getting ready for the best part here so we're going to be applying this stuff here tried and true beeswax and polymerized linseed oil based finish transfer a little bit over the solo cup here and we're going to need two rags one is going to apply this goop in excess to the workpiece and the other is going to buff it clean after it has a little time to drink. So this stuff is super gloopy right now because it's January and it's probably 38 degrees in my shop, somewhere in there, but here we go. Walnut's curly. I didn't realize that. That's cool. Good thing we put that piece on the front. Let's see what that mahogany looks like. bad. So this end grain up here and this almost end grain here on my 45, uh, we're probably going to want to hit that pretty heavy with the finish. Make a point of hitting it twice, letting it drink up all at once because that's at risk of going dry later if we don't apply finish in excess. It'll keep drinking it after the fact. That back looks nice. Let's hit that. I am really happy with the glue up I got. I did get a little bit of chalking with the glue up here. Basically, no amount of sanding is getting rid of all the glue in between the joints. Uh, that happens when I try to let something dry in my garage, because it's like just on the edge of where you're supposed to use the glue in my garage. It's a little cold. So I should have moved the workpiece into a different room to, uh, to dry up, but it's okay. We got a really nice glue up otherwise, very tight seams. Should be a sturdy piece. Clean rag, buff it dry. I gave it about 15 minutes to drink up whatever it wanted. Be mindful of lint coming off on your workpiece. Black walnut can be pretty grabby when it comes to the lint, you know. Don't be afraid to switch to a new rag.
So we're in the living room now, and this thing is in its final destination. I am loving the way that it came out. Uh, the mahogany and black walnut are a great combination. I'm gonna have to remember that. We got a pretty good glue up. This is uh, great that we didn't use any hardware for this at all. Um, nice tight seams going on. My new miter saw is letting me get much better joinery right off the saw. sort of a minimalist design uh, one chamber you know you could do separate little chambers for remotes and phones and stuff I don't know if you guys could even see my phone was lurking back here uh, fits in there great along with the remotes I could probably fit two more remotes in there or um, yeah a bunch of other different stuff so I hope you like how this came out I hope you liked watching the video uh, go ahead and let me know if there's anything that you uh, hated or loved about this till next time peace